Hey guys, it's Amanda. I hope your week is off to a good start. In today's video, I wanted to share how I made this Galaxy Pocket Card. I experimented with some of the new Distress Oxide colors and the new Distress Resist Spray to make the Galaxy. Okay, I'm starting out by making the pocket portion of the card. Here I have a piece of Tim Holtz watercolor paper and I'm marking where I want the pocket to go using a ruler and a pencil. And then I go ahead and slice along the line using a craft knife. I made sure to leave an eighth of an inch on either side of the slice to make sure when I fill it, it won't tear open. So here's the Distress Resist Spray. When I made this card, I was just experimenting with this stuff. It basically adds a bumpy texture and resists any ink you put over it when you wipe it off. I wanted to give the look of a shooting star trail, so I made a quick little stencil from some scratch paper. When I decide where I want it to go, I trace it lightly with pencil before I temporarily stick it down with some low tack frog tape and erase the pencil marks. This stuff gets everywhere, so it's very important to spray it in a box. I went ahead and did a couple of sprays over the stencil and then removed it and did a couple more sprays over the whole thing. I think I went a little overboard, but it's sort of hard to see. After I spray it, I go ahead and set it aside to air dry because when I tested it out before, I noticed that when I heat set it, some of the larger drops started to bubble and look weird. Here I'm taking a tag that I die cut from black cardstock and covering it with my anti-static powder bag because I want to white heat emboss this really sweet sentiment. This is the Cam and Chloe collection from Hampton Art, but I don't know the name of the stamp. I got this for, I think, $5 at Joann's, and I really love it. I get a great impression every time. I go ahead and stamp it with some Versa Mark ink and white heat emboss it using Ranger's white embossing powder. Once I heat set that, I go ahead and take a lacy border die from Lawn Fawn and use it to make my tag a little bit shorter. All right, after that's done, I go ahead and cut out an envelope from some black cardstock using a Lawn Fawn stitched envelope die. There are score lines, so it's really easy to fold, and I just use my bone folder to make sure it's creased really well. And then I use some thin double-sided tape to adhere it all together. I wanted there to be a little something on the flap, so I chose to white heat emboss a Just For You sentiment from Hero Arts. Now onto the ink blending portion of the card. I should mention that I'm just playing around here. I wasn't totally sure what the heck I was doing, so I end up changing some things as I go. I'm taking some of the new squeezed lemonade and blending it over the star trail using a Nuvo blending sponge. And I have to say, I love these. They're my new favorite blending tool for sure. The key to the resist spray is to wipe your panel with a dry cloth and it will remove anything that is on the spray. It's less noticeable with a lighter layer of ink, but it really pops as it becomes more colorful. All I'm really doing through this process is adding light layers of ink, wiping the panel, heat setting it, and then going in and adding more color to build it up and make it more bold. By heat setting it in between layers, I am able to put ink on top of the ink instead of just making a muddy mess. I sped this part up a lot and edited it out because it took a while, but all I'm doing is just going over where I think it needs more color. And then here is where I think I kind of messed up. I decided to go over it with some Blacks That Distress ink to darken it up a little bit. And I think it just made it a little too dark. So I go ahead and try to lift some of it up with a wet baby wipe. And it works a little bit, but you can see it really dulled the yellow. But that's okay. I go ahead and heat set it, and then I just start building up the color again, making it a little bit more vibrant. And after I added the black, I realized I didn't love how thick the star trail was with yellow. So I just went in with some of the shaded lilac and covered it up. And as you can see, it worked really well. I got it into a much better shape. 
And then at the top there, I decided I didn't want that yellow part. So I went ahead and covered it up again using the darker blue and purple and you can't really tell that it's there anymore which I think is so cool because you just can't really do that with other inks. Once I'm happy with how it looks I run some black soot distress ink around the edges so they don't stand out against the black cardstock I'll adhere this to. Okay so to stick the pocket to this black scalloped rectangle I'm using some very thin 1 8 inch double sided tape and placing it right up against the edges on all four sides. The closer you move to the center, the smaller the pocket gets. I also put a piece of tape along the top of the slice just to give it some stability. Just make sure to double check that it is the top so you don't accidentally close your pocket up. I go ahead and adhere that to the scalloped panel and then I adhere the scalloped panel to a black folding note card that I trimmed to be a little smaller than the panel so it didn't peek out from behind the scallops. And I lost the footage, but I went around the border with my Wink Estella shimmer pen for a little extra sparkle. Here I'm adding some little gems to each end of the pocket opening. I'm using glue dots for this and I went ahead and doubled up on them because I wanted to make sure they were very secure. Here I am stuffing the little envelope from earlier with a Barnes & Noble gift card because this is for my daughter for Valentine's Day and she loves to read. To seal it I just use a tape runner but pretty much any kind of adhesive will work here. Okay, and for the tag I'm taking some lilac and black embroidery floss for the tassels at the top. This is actually going to count as my sentiment, but also double as a bookmark for when she picks out a book with her gift card. For the last step, before I stuff the pocket, I add a little star gem with some strong liquid adhesive. I set an acrylic block on it to help it stay in place as it dries. You can kind of see some of the texture the resist spray adds. It's really cool because it's bumpy. And I think that this will be great for mixed media projects and I'm looking forward to playing around with it more. This card was not made with the intention of being mailed or even put into an envelope, but you could make the tag smaller or use a 5 by 7 envelope if you really wanted to. I love adding pockets to things. It's an easy thing to do. There are a lot of different styles and it's just something unexpected on a card. Okay, that's it for today. If you have any questions or requests, please leave a comment down below. All of the products I use in this video are listed in the description box. I wanted to mention real quick that I am taking the next couple of weeks off to do some traveling, but I will have a video up shortly after I get back. Alright, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up, and if you would like to stick around for more videos like this, don't forget to subscribe. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you next time.